at the moment, I've got turned off. Friday is the new Saturday. Now, the four-day working week arouses general sympathy, but very often it's portrayed as being harmful to the economy. The economy is the price you must pay for the good life. In this book, I want to change the narrative and explain the many compelling economic arguments to show that the four-day working week will actually improve rather than harm our economies. Uh, so let me start with the words uh, of an economist that I know everyone here admires. He wrote, progress comes from technical invention, and we shall ever be grateful to the discoverer of fire, the inventor, the inventor of the electric dynamo, and the perfecter of all and sauce. But there are also momentous social inventions. Indeed, as society becomes more affluent, these may become increasingly vital. The four-day week is precisely such a social invention. The economist who wrote these words was no other than Paul Samuelson. Paul Samuelson is one of the most widely admired economists. Uh, he won the Nobel Prize in 1970. He's considered the father of modern economics. In the same year he won the Nobel Prize, he wrote the foreword of a book called Four Days, 40 Hours. The book was describing this novel and radical management practice called the Four Day Week. At the time, it was implemented at more than 30 firms through what's called the 440, a compressed work week of 40 hours in four days. Paul Samuelson called it a social, a momentous social intention, comparing it to language. Okay, this is my take on the book. I will view the four-day working week not as a partisan policy or merely a win for workers. It's a social innovation, a better way to organize economic activity in the 21st century. So we have to distinguish uh, the book in the 1970s and most of the news that you've heard about the four-day working week, whether in Iceland uh, or in Microsoft Japan or in Perpetual Guardian in New Zealand, they all refer to the four-day working week as a management practice, microeconomic, bottom-up approach. So firms introduce it to increase productivity. There's also the four-day working week initiated by workers. This is called part-time. In the UK, 25% of all workers are working part-time. In Netherlands, close to 50% of all workers are working part-time. Most of them are in a four-day working week and working at 8%. This is different from my definition. I think that society is ready, not to the, uh, more than the macroeconomic approach, but a top-down macroeconomic policy implemented by legislation to the entire economy, giving a period of four to six years for everyone in the economy, firms, households, governments to adjust. This is my definition. It's very easy to understand. The idea is uh, all the activity that we currently do over the week will coordinate over four days, Monday to Thursday, all the economic activity that exists over the weekend, and there exists, the, the, it will coordinate over Friday to Sunday. Then all the economic activity that occurs continuously in the economy, let's say hospitals, uh, restaurants, hotels, it will still be done over the seven days, but we just expect a typical work week for a worker to be for. Okay, this is my definition uh, that I'll take in the book. Now, uh, no, not every economist is so enlightened as Paul Samuelson, and the working week, the four day working week, has its uh, critics. And I'll read you two of them. A shorter work week would prove nothing short of a calamity to the wage earners of this country. And if any government were crazy enough to try it, it would simply turn the deep recession you already face into a complete catastrophe. Okay. These two criticisms are separated by more than 80, 84 years. The first one was written by the president of the Brookings Institute in 1936, uh, criticizing the idea of shortening the working week from six days to five days. I know that. For us, the working five days seems very natural, but there's really nothing biological or theological or astrological about working five days. The working week is a political, social, and economic construct. So in the US, so in the Western economies, in the 19th century, people worked six days. And in the US, 
in 1908, the first firm strikes this innovative radical management practice called the five day working week. The movement got a boost when what's now considered the, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time, Henry Ford, in 1926, implemented in his factories. But uh, he was alone. So before the Great Depression, only 5% of all workers in the US were working the uh, five day working week. This change and the five day working week moved from the management practice to the macro economy with the approval in June 1938 of the Fair Labor Standards Act, a uh, central part of uh, the Green Deal signed by President Roosevelt that uh, installed a five day, 40 hour week as the norm. It gave uh, close to two years for firms to adjust and not all firms were affected. It initially started as firm, with firms doing interstate commerce, so larger firms, and it was the coverage expanded in the following decades, between the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Now, the most uh, uh, interesting thing about the criticisms of the five-day working week then is that they completely disappeared once they were, it was implemented. And not only did they disappear, but they gave rise to the first visionaries of the four-day working week. In 1956, Vice President at the time, Richard Nixon, were saying that the four-day week will be coming soon. And why is this? Because everyone realized that the five-day working week was a better way to organize economic activity in the 20th century. I think that now we can say the same. The four-day working week is a better way to organize economic activity in the 21st century. Think about it. In 80 years, everything in society has changed. The technology we use, the, the jobs we have, the speed in which we communicate, demographics, the length of our lives, the years that we study, the structure of the family, the nature of our social interactions, everything changed. And we're still thinking that five days is that ideal number, as if it was a constant in mathematics or physics. So, in the book, I'll present eight reasons, economic reasons, uh, to, uh, for the four day working. And I've enlisted the help of four of the greatest political economists in history, each one torchbearer of particular ideologies. And I'm going to look at the economy through their eyes. So John Minor Keynes, reason number one, because it's possible. The choice of how much we work is exactly that. It's a choice. It's not a law of economics. Reason number two, because it will fuel the economy through the demand for leisure industries. Joseph Schumpeter, profit of innovation. Reason number three, because it will increase productivity. Reason number four, because it will unleash the potential of a vast talent pool of innovators. The seed of the deepest innovation is not planted with money, it's planted with time. Karl Marx, because it will reduce technological unemployment. And reason number six, because it will raise wages and reduce inequality. And finally, the uh, Messiah of liberalism, Frederick von Hayek. Reason number seven, because it will give people more freedom to choose what to do with their time. And reason number eight, because it will reconcile a polarized society and crush populist movements that pose a great danger to our economy. Now, I don't expect to, that everyone agrees with all the arguments, because I don't expect a Marxist to agree with a liberal in many, in many things. But what I believe is whatever your ideology, you will find reasons that will speak to you. And I think, honestly think, that whether you are conservative, liberal, progressive, or Marxist, we, we can all unite behind the idea of the four day working. Okay. This is an academic conference, and uh, because of that, so I'm not going to explain all the arguments in detail, but I want to focus a bit more on one of them, even this, uh, this is a conference on fiscal adjustments and fiscal policy. And it's reason number two, because it will fuel the economy through the demand for leisure industries. And I, I'll go back to Henry Ford, uh, to his statement when he implemented the five-day working in, in his factories. He wrote, Instead of business being slowed up because people are off work, 
it will be speeded up because the people consume more in their leisure than in their working time. This will lead to more work, and this to more profits, and this to more wages. The result of more leisure will be the exact opposite of what most people might suppose it to be. This is actually Keynesian economics, 10 years before the general field. She said, who would my workers buy my cars? Why would they buy my cars if they are working six days in the factory? They will feel the need. Shortly, the working week, workers will want more and better goods, more food, more music, more books, more of everything, she wrote. Okay. And we can just make the same arguments now. People feel their needs and spend more in their leisure time. Why is this relevant today? Today, we are living in a period of secular stagnation. So this is the name economists give for a period of prolonged and sluggish growth that we've lived since the financial crisis. Okay. Some economists, not all, think that the cause of secular stagnation is lack of aggregate demand, as it happened during the Great Depression in the 1930s. And the current narrative in economics about how we got out of the Great Depression is that the government, the US government, followed Keynes' advice and increased government spending thanks to the New Deal and then to the Second World War. That's the narrative. This is what's behind the current policy of uh, President Biden of stimulating the economy through a big fiscal package. Okay. Now, Keynesians are not Keynes. So Keynes wrote in 45, full employment policy by means of government investment is only one particular application of an intellectual theory. You can produce the results just as well by consuming more or working less, both of which would occur under shorter working. So given this statement by Keynes, let me propose an alternative explanation for how we got out of the Great Depression back then. The book doesn't have crowds, doesn't have equations, doesn't have tables, only comic strips, but because I'm among academics, I'm going to show you a graph. This is the unemployment rate, shoot up to 25% in 1932, the light line to government spending. Then with a new deal, Government spending in real terms increased more than 2.3, uh, more than twice. And it got an effect in reducing unemployment, but then it shoot up. And in June 1938, it was back at 20%. That was the month President Roosevelt signed the Fair Labor Standards Act. What happened? Unemployment started falling the following months and actually accelerated down before the deadline that firms had in the end of 1914. And by the end of, or the middle of 42, unemployment was already at zero. Now you tell me, this is what happened to government spending. It kept increasing, but if you notice, it, uh, the big increase in government spending only occurred in later stages of the World War, in 1943, 44, and 45 when the level of expenditure reached nine times the value of 1938. The unemployment rate started falling the months, the precise the months after it was fine, and the increasing government spending only occurred much later. Now I'm an economist, so I know this is just the data. I don't uh, make any causal, we can't disentangle the, the two, but I think there's enough circumstantial evidence, if you want, to really think about short day working week as a way out of secular stagnation. Okay, so the second part of the book tries to argue, tries to persuade you that the idea of a four day working week is worth pursuing. But then we have, if, you, if I persuade you, we still have a second problem, a question how we, do we make it happen? How do we implement it? And because it's a social innovation, a different, a different way of organizing economic activity, it's going to be disruptive. But I think that it's going to be much less disruptive than you can imagine in the first place. Now, I'm sure you had a question at some point in the presentation whether everyone would have to have a 20% wage cut. And the answer is no. Wage cuts are, are only one form of adjustment of firms to a four-day working week amongst eight. Most importantly, time is an adjustment because people start adjusting their behavior beforehand. So a period of five years will give enough time for firms to adjust. 
nominal wages in the UK before the pandemic were growing at 4% in nominal terms. If workers and firms agree on no wage increases on the year prior to the implementation and the year after, this already takes care of 8 percentage points out of the 20 percentage points needed for the adjustment. But even this is uh, all the firms, whether or public sector, whether it's in Iceland or in New Zealand or in Japan, every firm that has tried a four-day working week saw very large increases in productivity, many of them enough to compensate to offset the reduction in hours. They could produce the same in four, work, in four days as they were doing before in five. They adjusted process. They shortened the meetings. They bought new machine or new software. They became more efficient, more productive. It might not happen to all occupations, to all firms, but a large subset of them <laughs> will actually see large increases in productivity and reduction in costs. You can think uh, of increasing hours in the remaining days. The 440 policy, uh, the one in the book in 1970, proposed exactly only this adjustment. You compress the 40 hours into four days, adding two hours in the remaining days. Now, this seems too much for the economy-wide adjustments, but perhaps in some occupations, you need to put in these 30 minutes. Perhaps in other occupations, you could in these one hour in the remaining days. This would already take care of one quarter or half of the needed adjustment. Some firms, if the, the weight of the wage bill in, in the, their operating costs is small, they can just fill in the, the, the higher costs if they have to hire more workers into an increasing price. And some firms, and this has been well documented at the 68th, the share, the relationship of profits with respect to the wage bill has been increasing in most countries, especially in the US. Uh, some firms could take a, a hit, if you think about new technolo technological firms, could take a hit in the reduction in profits. And then finally, to use with care, government subsidies. Again, it would be too expensive, prohibitively expensive to finance all the, the adjustment by subsidizing the difference but eventually for some occupations or some industries, let's say environmental related, something that the government wants to protect, you can use government subsidies. The point is, we are not going to use, it's not a one size fits all policy. You don't need one adjustment, you need a combination of adjustments. And it's going to be different in different countries. You don't expect the same adjustment in the US or in France or in Portugal. And even within a country, you don't expect the same adjustments in different occupations. It's going to be different for restaurants, for uh, higher education, for bus drivers, for our extraction industries, journalists, etc. But this portfolio of possibilities, this different combination, gives enough flexibility together with some exemptions, for instance, in agriculture, and uh, or uh, different timelines, asking the adjustment to come first from multinational companies and giving more time to smaller firms to adjust. It's we have it's flexible enough. Uh, to reduce uh, the, the costs in terms of disturbance to the economy. The benefits of the four-day working week are at their highest right now, and the costs are at the lowest. The main cost of the four-day working week is the disruption of the implementation. But now with the COVID pandemic, there is no normal. The normal is, is shattered, it's, it's broken. Now we are looking for a new normal, and I think the four-day working week uh, is the best normal that you can, that, can, that you can get from now. So that's it. The book is out on 10th of August. You can pre-order now in the usual outlets. You can buy it in triplicate. You can uh, read it, write a review, start a conversation, give it to friends, and start talking about it. Uh, the economy is not the price to pay for the good life. It's quite the opposite. The four-day working week will improve our economy. Thank you.